Hey guys, this is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortnite instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide, and these are my study videos that I'm doing for my NSC7 that I take literally in nine hours. I gotta hit the sack, but I, uh, I uh, set up in the last lab our topology here with OSPF, so everything's being learned through dynamic routing and all is right with the world, and then I remembered poor little 40 doc here. So how does our remote users fall into the security fabric? All right, and like what is affected with it and OSPF? Because remember how we talked about uh, deleting all of the static routes? Well, I found I found this guy here. Let's take a look. So here's our uh, data center. And I couldn't remember off the top of my head what the 10.10.200 network was for, but I left it, all right? And that's because in that video, uh, when I had Mr. 40 Duck here uh, remote in, right? Uh, I think it was through IPsec, though. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, we had to put that route in order for him to get access because when he came through the MPLS network, uh, it didn't know that that subnet was a part of the uh, VPN tunnel for remote users, and it wasn't working. But the second I put it on, it started working. All right? But the whole point of dynamic routing was to get away from that. Now, that's obviously something that's that's not a not an interface that can go down okay so but then again our ssl tunnels i mean they're they're uh made in such a way where we can't even see uh like the ip addresses and things like that on it so i'm not too sure what's gonna happen here so uh but let's go ahead and log him in and see what he looks like here in the security fabric so uh let me get back to my headquarters all right here we go all right, here we are, okay? And uh, yeah, if we go to our, um, you know what? Let's just log him in. So 40 Duck is somewhere out here. He's not a part of our topology. He's a remote dial-up user, uh, and he's using SSL to get in. And we chose SSL because, oh, we were going to try that host checking, and that host checking thing just didn't work out too well. So here we go. Uh, he is 40 Duck. He's going to put in his 40 duck credentials. All right, here we go. And hopefully it'll, it will authenticate. So, all right. So my question is, once he's here, all right, and we'll, all right, there we go. We're connected. And let's say he needs to access resources at headquarters. So he goes to our, our awesome internal intra website. All right, there we go, which is a janky IIS server. But, um, uh, what does he look like on the security fabric? So let's go back to headquarters here. And if we go to our security fabric and we go to our logical topology, I don't think we see 40 duck on here. So, um, all right. I don't really see any kind of users. So let's try 40 view. All right. Let's look at sources maybe. All right, that's a different view, the tabular view here. All right. And our VPN tunnel should be here somewhere. All right. Do, 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 do. No, see, I'm not really seeing much from him either. Now, remember, this is coming from the... Um, this is coming from the, the main FortiGate here, so it's not exactly in real time. Um, let's go to our... Here we go, VPN. I'm just kind of poking around, right? Uh, Real-time map. Unable to load VPN map, okay. Now, I think that's the VPN VPN topology map that they introduced, and because uh, we're not using public IP addresses, it doesn't really work, so. Um, all right, well, we definitely know that we can go to um, monitor okay and we can go to ssl monitor and you'll see here mr 40 duck is here all right i was just wondering where he would appear on our actual security fabric or if we had to like enable the 40 clients endpoint registration maybe i'm not too sure um now the 6.2 the new one that came out uh just recently um 
pretty much limited what the 40 client can do without an EMS license. Now this is 6.0 though, and I did notice on the dashboard how it still has the licenses defined here. Now if you go to 6.2, the last time I checked, I don't think those are there anymore because they're defined on the EMS server. All right, so where was that? Um, where is all my licensing there? Or did I just make that up? Okay. I thought that it said it on there, but maybe not. Maybe I did make it up. So, um, But you know what we could do is that we could go to this VPN tunnel. We could go to our um, portal settings, okay? And uh, I believe he is using the full access to remote in. And if we come down here, all right, see we have our, our routes defined there. Um, Where's our endpoint? All right, so download method. All right, limit one user, split tunneling. Options, allow clients to connect automatically, keep alive, save passwords. So there used to be something here that said allow endpoint registration. I'm not even seeing that, guys. So did they even take that out? Let's let's see if it's not here in the SSL VPN settings. All right. Um, because that's essentially how we go. Oh, there it is. My bad. It's like 2 in the morning for me, guys. So here we go. So allow the endpoint registration will allow that 40 telemetry to come down. But I don't know if that's going to do us a lick of good unless we are, have an EMS license anymore. I really just simply don't know, guys. That's why I'm just... I'm curious. So um, and let's go ahead and log out. 40 duck. 40 duck. I love you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going a little crazy. Here we go. So let's disconnect. All right. Let's reconnect them. And let's see if that endpoint registration does any good for us. So because um, it would be neat to use that 40 telemetry. Now, one of these days, I'll actually put up an EMS server. Um, but, you know, not right before I take my exam. <laughs> so I should probably be going to bed right now. So, uh, but let's see if that did anything for us. Um, let's go to our uh, monitor. We'll go to our VPN monitor. All right, so 40 duck is there. Uh, did it do anything special for us? So um, now, interestingly enough, uh, when I was poking around the older versions of this, I actually saw the um, the interface for the SSL roots on here using an APIPA address for the 40 telemetry. I'm not seeing that at all, okay, which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to pop open this little guy here, all right, and I'm going to go to my console, and I'm just going to do a config um, uh, system interface, all right, and I'm going to do a show. And as you can see, we have our physical tunnels here. And then we have our and then we have our logical ones. And one of them is called SSL root. And look, there's that a pip address that I was talking about. Okay. And roll WAN. All right. Alias. And it is not visible. But I wonder if we do a edit. SSL dot root. All right. And then if you do a git command here, you'll see all of the attributes that we can do. All right. So, and uh, yeah, not too bad. Right. Let's see what we got here. Art boarding. What? There's so much crazy stuff here. Uh, I wonder if there's anything that says about 40 telemetry. Oh, uh, there's a heartbeat. That must be for the keep alives. So, uh, AP discover, SNMP traps. Okay. Uh, endpoint compliance. All right. There you go. But that's if we had an EMS server. So, um, yeah, I'm not seeing too, too much here. I'm seeing anything that says 40 telemetry. It could be staring at my face and I can't even see it right now. So, uh, there's some IP6 info. Um, yeah, AP auto discovering, which we don't need. Yeah, I'm not really seeing much of, of anything here, um, which is kind of a bummer, but uh, let's do a set. What can we set here? We can set a routing forwarding table. We can do distance. 
broadcast forward, allow access, permit types of management access. Okay. Set allow access. Oh, look at that. Okay, sure. Um, what should we do here? Ping. Now, this is for the actual... Um, yeah, I'm going to give up. So Because this is actually for the SSL root tunnel, not for 40 Duck himself. So I'm pretty sure that we'd have to do an EMS server at this point to really see visibility with him. So... Um, because, you know, honestly, if we go to our routing monitor, I mean, I don't see anything here that says that 10, 10, 20 is even connected. All right. So it must just be happening all behind the scenes. Okay. Well, there's the, there's the APIPA address that wasn't there like two seconds ago. All right. So that's interesting. Okay. Um, is that tunnel like not visible until it's like up up see how i don't see it in here it's usually collapsible underneath the uh the wan interface so all right guys um yeah so that was kind of a bummer but interestingly enough okay so 40 ducks here he's connected he has access to the iis server and he also has access to the DC through the SD WAN. All right, and we did this before, and uh, but in my last video that I was doing this on, uh, we did not we did not get connectivity to this guy. All right, uh, until we put the static route in there, and we told it where this came from. Now, what I thought was interesting is uh, I was kind of deking around with this because I couldn't remember what that was used for. And I delete it, okay? Now, technically, it doesn't know where 10, 10, 20 is coming from, all right? And because of reverse path forwarding check, it should be doing some kind of dropping. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean, um, that necessarily doesn't mean that it's not doing some kind of like, you know, policy-based routing to let it know, or if it's using some of the 40 telemetry. Here, there's the... There's the APIPA address, all right? So, but I mean, technically speaking, that should drop it, right? And you know what? It never does. So, you know, because I was worried about deleting that static route because the whole point of having OSPF or dynamic routing protocols, so you don't have to worry about that jazz. And guys, yeah, I mean, it, it worked. So I guess I don't need it. Anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, Mr. 40 Duck here is still good to go. And, uh, you know, we can still see his IP address when it comes to things like, you know, our firewall policies. And let's just see that. I don't want you guys to think, like, it's all for a loss because we can come down to our log and reportings. We can go to our forwarding traffic log. And we should see 40 Duck there. So, and uh, all we'd have to do is find his uh IP address. So let's do that. Let's do source. All right. And we'll do his IP address of, I don't even see it up there. 10, 10, 20. What IP address is he? 10. I mean, he's he's there. <laughs> Look at that, forty duck. Isn't that great? Because he authenticated in. Um, I mean, he's he's there, so it's not like he's not there. I just wanted to explore a little bit more about, um, you know, what it looks like now that the security fabric was enabled, and we didn't have endpoint control um, registering the forty client, and and we're still okay. Um, I'll check one last place and I'll, I'll quit recording, but I wonder what he shows up on the 40 analyzer as. Um, what is my 40 analyzer's IP address? 10, 10, 1, I think we did 250, right? Here we go. Yep, the fish, I'm good. Quack, all right. Don't worry, 40 doc, we'll find you here. All right, so uh, here we go. So let's go into our 40 view. And, uh, yeah. Failed connections. 
SSL dial up button sack. See, 40 duck. He's right there. So he is getting monitored. It's showing where he's coming from, how much received, the number of connections, the duration. So, I mean, we're good. But I was just trying to bring up that without an EMS server now, you really don't get that endpoint control. So maybe I'll do that for a different video. Um, it is not on the version of the NSC7 that I'm, I'm going for. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I'll stop it there. I just kind of wanted to explore that a little bit more with you guys. And, uh, yeah, good times. All right. See you guys next time.